ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीमद भगवद गीता उन्मय उरविल एज इट इज ट्रांसलेशन एंड कॉमेंट्री बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद चैप्टर सिक्स टेक्स्ट फाइव उद्धरेदात्मनात्मात्मासादेत आत्म हि आत्मनो बंधुर्त्म रिपुरात्म वन मस्ट डिलीवर हिमसेल्फ विद द हेल्प ऑफ हिज माइंड एंड नॉट डिग्रेड हिमसेल्फ द माइंड इज द फ्रेंड ऑफ द कंडीशन सो एंड हिज एनमी एज वेल The principle described in this verse is, or should be easy to understand. That if the mind is absorbed in material thoughts, then we remain in material bondage. Therefore, we have to become free from material thoughts. If we want to be free from the cycle of suffering in birth and death, therefore we have to remove our mind. from material thoughts the principle is it's easy to understand we can all understand practically doing it is not so easy because the mind is always involved with everything in this world we don't know anything else the mind processes data from the uh, senses gyan indriya by seeing touching tasting smelling feeling hearing we we interact the senses interact with the sense objects and the mind processes all of this and not only what we presently touch taste smell feel hear and think about but from millions of lifetimes we have various impressions of what we previously touched tasted smelled felt heard and thought about then how can we get free from this but if we don't become free from this then we remain entangled in this material world yang yang vapi smaran bhavam tyajanti kale varang tang tame vaiti kante asada tad bhava bhavita ha whatever we think about at the time of death that forms our next body but all through our life we live in this world so at the time of death we remember everything that we've done in this life and that propels us to our next birth so how to get out of this well krishna offers some idea here that we have to elevate ourselves by the mind and not be degraded by it in other words we have to control the mind and withdraw it from sensual objects so that's also easy to understand not easy to do we may think that well krishna he spoke this bhagavad gita to arjuna and arjuna is a very great personality so krishna spoke this to arjuna so he could do that but i can't do this but arjuna also said to krishna i can't do this chanchalang hi mana krishna pramati balavadridham tasyaham nigraham mane vayoriva sudushkara After explaining all this about it controlling the mind in this same chapter Arjuna told Krishna chanchalam hi mana Krishna Krishna the mind is just chanchala you have that word in your language chanchala same, language, same, word. same word yeah just doesn't stay in any one place <laughs> well i didn't come to that yet about the vayu that comes afterwards so chanchala that's also one word for lightning 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 you'll just see it's there and then next second it's over there so just one flash and gone it's gone somewhere else and as you already explained in this verse uh, arjuna also gives the example of the wind we have to control the mind So Arjuna thought well that's just about as practical as going outside in a hurricane and holding your hands out and trying to control the wind 
Even not in a hurricane, even in a slow wind, you can't, how are you going to control it? So Krishna agreed. Actually, that's true. Asangshayang mahabaho mano dur nigraham chalam. He said, actually, that's right. I just told you about controlling the mind, but what you said is right. It's very difficult to control the mind. But then he said, abhyasena tukontaya vairagena. By abhyas, by practice and by detachment, it is possible. Hmm. So everyone should practice controlling the mind and being detached from, then you can control the mind. All right. Okay, so that's it. Well, how do you do it practically? Then the question may come. Well, Elsewhere in Bhagavatam, we find somewhat different formula for getting liberated from this world. Here in this verse, Krishna says we can be degraded by the mind or elevated by the mind. In the Bhagavatam, we find Bhagavan Rishabdev, he states that Mahat Sevam Dwaram Ahur Vimuktes Tamo Dwaram Yoshitang Sangi Sangam that by association with great personalities, one can be fully liberated. Rishab, Rishabdev. Yeah. Rishab, what do you know? Shukadev, but Rishabdev. Yeah. And the, the path to hell is open by associating with people who are attached to associating with women. Now on hearing this, all our Grihastha devotees and lady devotees may feel disappointed. But uh, Rishabdev, although he's the Supreme Lord, he was speaking as a Grihastha. He was speaking to his sons, among whom nine became renunciants and the rest became married. Hundred sons. Yeah. If you... Uh, can make good devotees, like Rishabdev made his hundred sons good devotees. Then you also have a hundred sons. That used to be in the Hindu wedding. They used to say, may you be the mother of a hundred sons. They probably still say it. But they don't want it. It's only two maximum. <clears throat> so this appears to be a different instruction. In one instruction, it is, the instruction is, by controlling the mind, one is liberated. Another instruction is by association, we're liberated or degraded. But actually, it comes to the same point. Because by associating with great saintly persons, our mind will be purified. And they will give us the subject matter for the mind that will purify us. I'll explain that a little more. Now, if we simply think that, well, I have to empty the mind of all bad things, it'll be very difficult. But the great devotees, they give us topics of Krishna. So by thinking of Krishna, the mind becomes purified. It's not just a matter of trying to empty the mind. Yeah, but right. instead of filling it with material thoughts, we fill it with thoughts of Krishna. Krishna is fully spiritual. Therefore, throughout Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjuna to think of him. So this instruction to purify oneself by the mind, that is particularly given for the dhyana yogis. This chapter 6 of Bhagavad Gita, it describes dhyana yoga. But the instruction to purify the mind, uh, one has to purify the mind. That's true for everyone. If they want to be if they want to be purified. Everyone, everyone who is intelligent should want to be purified. Because if we remain in impure consciousness, then we remain in birth, death, old age and disease. But the best method of purification, simplest method also, is to think of Krishna. And by associating with great devotees, they will naturally remind us of Krishna. Just to give some example, now is election season in Tamil Nadu. So the politicians are going here and there and saying, think of me. Said, Krishna, Krishna in Bhagavad Gita says, think of me. And the politicians, they want you to think of them. Think of me and vote for me. <clears throat> so if you associate with politicians, then you'll get into political consciousness. 
That's why our friend, what's his name? He's a sarpanch and this uh, poga. What's it? Ranjan. 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 He he's, he wants to stop politics. He wants to be good. But I'm telling him, you be good and be the sarpanch. We want someone like Yudhishthir as the sarpanch, not Duryodhan. So you can be good and be a politician at the same time. It's very difficult in the modern age, no doubt. Anyway, it's just an example. Whatever kind of persons you associate with, you'll get that kind of... It will influence our consciousness. Just like here in Bela, we find so many children, they, uh, they're raised nicely at home in their family, but then when they go to VIT, they learn... <laughs> They go there to learn engineering, but they also learn how to smoke, how to drink, how to lie, how to be vulgar, how to have girlfriends, boyfriends, all these things. So somehow that bad atmosphere is there, and they become influenced. So association is very important. We should associate with saintly people who help us to remember Krishna. And by that, we will get not only moksha, now you may ask, well, what do you mean not only moksha? There's nothing higher than that. But if you listen very carefully, you would have heard when I was saying this verse that mahatsevam dwaram ahur vimuktes, vimukti. So vimukti, well, what, what does that mean, vimukti? You've all heard the word mukti. But what does vimukti mean? Vimukti means visheshrupena mukti, it means special. So what does that mean? That means that mukti means to become free from birth and death. But there's something more. Simply to get free from suffering is not all in all. Just like, to give an example, this material world is often compared to a jail. Velo also has jail. So the people in the jail, they want to get out of the jail. Just to get out of the jail, that's not all in all. You have to become well established in society. You have to get... It's not enough just to be free, but you should also have some good source of income and you should become respectable in society like this. So vimukti means not only to be free from birth and death, but to be situated in our constitutional position of serving Krishna in pure love in the spiritual world. And I'm sure you can say that much better in Tamil than you can in English. As is stated in the, one of the defining verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, defining the word mukti. Muktir hit vanyata rupam swarupena vyavastitihi. Mukti means to give up or to be released from our present form. Whatever, now we have a human form. <laughs> but that's not all, there's more. There's another line also, one more charan in the verse. Ah, no, half verse, half verse. No, one more pada, yeah. So that is that to be situated in one's constitutional position. Jive surupoi krishna nityadas. The constitutional position of the living being is as the eternal servant of Krishna. So by associating with devotees, the door to uh, <coughs> pure Krishna consciousness, the highest liberation, becomes opened. By associating with pure devotees, the door to the highest liberation, Krishna consciousness, is opened. And by associating with materialistic people, then the door to ignorance, darkness and hellishness is opened. The particular word used is yoshitam sangi sangam, by associating with people who like to associate with women. So the idea is that um, by associating with women for the sake of sense enjoyment, or if women associate with men for the sake of sense enjoyment, that is that increases the illusion. But if one in uh, religious family life husband and wife together serve Krishna, then that is not degrading, that is elevating. Ah. So this process of trying to control the mind, sitting like this, very, very difficult. 
that by associating with devotees, Krishna consciousness becomes very easy. Our most revered and loved Srila Prabhupada, he would often say, what is the difficulty? He would say, what is the difficulty to be Krishna conscious? And when we're sitting with him and he says that, it's, uh, yeah, it's obvious, it's very na- it seems to us very natural. Because for Srila Prabhupada is just completely, naturally, 100% intensely absorbed in Krishna consciousness. There's no question of him being in Maya in the, even in the slightest way. So he's so naturally Krishna conscious that just by being with him you feel that yes, it's just very easy to be Krishna conscious. Sripad Ramanuja, the great Acharya who has blessed this land, this Tamil-speaking area of India, he gave some similar advice. He said, if you're just completely useless, if you... you No, I say, if you're just completely useless, you're just so weak-minded, you can't do any japa or tapa or anything, just go and sit next to the devotees. Just be with them. Just by being in their presence, you'll be, you'll be purified. Because the devotees, they, what do they do? Matchita, matgata prana, bodhayantas parasparam, katayantas chamang nityang, tushan teacher, raman teacher. Devotees, their mind has gone to Krishna. Their, their life has gone, they're, they're, they're absorbed in Krishna. They're, they like to discuss among themselves topics of Krishna. They take great pleasure in that. So by associating with devotees, even if we're completely dull-headed, then we'll be benefited by their mercy. Of course, one has to be quite spiritually awake even to take such advice. Just like all of you have come this evening to hear something about Krishna consciousness. But many people, if we invite them, they'll say, what? Uh, it's Sunday night, the best programs on TV are on Sunday night. Is it? In most countries, it's, is it like that in India? The best program. Prime time, it's called. Prime nonsense. Best, no- <laughs> best nonsense of all. So persons who are got at least some spiritual credit they like to associate with devotees. And as they become more advanced, they like to associate more with devotees. Gradually, by the mercy of devotees, they themselves become such devotees that neophytes, they will be benefited by associating with them. So Srila Prabhupada, in one of his glorious purports, wrote that, we request all the members of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness to become pure devotees so that others may benefit by their association. So, to control the mind is difficult, no doubt. But if we become absorbed in topics of Krishna, then our mind will naturally go that way. And we can do that by associating with devotees. Now, we can associate with devotees directly, Directly in the sense that everyone here is devotees, so we're physically in proximity with them. But we may think, well, I would have liked to associate with Srila Prabhupada directly. Well, you can do so. Through his writings, he's given these books. He said, if you want to know me, read my book. So we can associate with Srila Prabhupada by reading his book and following his instruction. That doesn't mean that we should only read his books and not associate with devotees physically and personally. It's one of the instructions he gives in his books is to do that, to associate with devotees. So devotees, they will help us to understand all the points in Srila Prabhupada's book. Of course, it may be that someone has some misunderstanding, so you have to be careful also. Someone may wrongly explain what's in Srila Prabhupada's book. So we have to choose our association very carefully. But if we're fortunate to get the association of devotees who are actually very sincere, their only goal of life is to serve Krishna, then by their association, automatically our mind can be purified, filled up with Krishna. Krishna thought, Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> Otherwise, just to empty the mind, as the impersonalists say, that's not enough. 
You yeah. you can't I, this whole idea just make the mind empty. It's how is that possible? Because we are jivas, we are living beings. Jiva means conscious. So we're always conscious of something. So if we just try to empty the mind, it's something like holding our breath. You can't you can't do that very long. It's just like if there's some bad smell, you may want to hold your breath. You don't want to breathe in. But you can't go on like that very long. Three minutes maximum and you'll be dead unless you're a yogi. Unless you're a yogi. That's what they teach, is it, doctor? Three minutes, is it? Most... Is it? Three minutes. Yeah, three minutes and you're dead without, without breathing. So I remember seeing on TV as a child, they got an Indian yogi and put him in a vacuum box and he was in there for, I don't know, half an hour or something. But anyway, science just doesn't bother with things like that. Anyway, I'm just giving this as an example. If you try to keep the mind empty, eventually it'll fill up with something. It's just like, uh, I have a glass full of poison, so empty it out. So it's like the mind is full of poison. Kam, Krod, Lo, Moha, Madha, Matsarya, all the bad things are there. Just to empty it is not enough. You have to fill it up. If we don't put the nectar of Krishna consciousness, it will again fill with poison because it has to have something. So that's what happens to people who just try to empty the mind. It again fills up with poison. People, some people think, again that word came, vimukti. But these, some, they are vimukti mane, mani. They think, now I'm fully liberated. Some people may think I'm fully liberated. But they don't have any particular regard for Krishna. So they, they may become liberated by great difficulty, very, very difficult to empty the mind, so-called empty the mind. But because they don't fill it up with topics of Krishna, then it fills up with topics of poison, and again they come back to the material. So better we associate with devotees and help each other to become Krishna conscious. Parasparanu katanam, by discussing among ourselves all these topics, Krishna topics. So we can read the books of Srila Prabhupada, then we can discuss. We can discuss this. so many topics. He gives all Krishna centered. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I said before, I've said several times that Velor is famous for CMC, VIT, Velor Jail. So we should make it famous for Krishna Bhakti. They want to make, there was some discussion to make an airport here because so many people are coming to CMC and VIT. Not so many. Well, I guess the criminals, they don't get brought by plane to jail. <laughs> oh, Golden Temple also. Four things, four things. No, but from three things, many people come. That's CMC. Not so many. I mean, many, but not so many come to the jail. So many people come to see the Golden Temple to the VIT for study and CMC for medical treatment. So we should make Velo famous for Krishna Bhakti. Make it a holy place. That people think, oh, I go to Velo. Oh, there's so many devotees of Krishna. Oh, good, let me go. Someone, someone may say, I want to go. And then their, their father will say, no, no, you don't go to Velo. I don't want you to go. Too many devotees. <laughs> I don't want you to become a devotee. There are so many Hiranyakashipu type. So then they may say, Oh, I need medical treatment. I have to go to Velo. Heart problem. What's the heart problem? Oh, I've got calm, crowd, low, more. This is the real heart problem. So our Krishna conscious centers, they are hospitals. So in the hospital, the treatment is by chanting Hare Krishna. And the medicine... Or the diet is prasadam. Okay, so I think we all need some medicine now. Time for prasadam. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Any, any question, please? Hmm? 
No. All right then, Hare Krishna. Everyone should. Everyone has to take their medicine.